some some kind of illegal stuff like drugs and then there's this issue on a uh, there's this issue I was talking uh, I, this is an, this is an earlier question I don't know who can answer it but uh, it's about the about the smart ports the smart ports for example in Rotterdam and uh, confident ports in uh, they, they have they, they are actually applying up, uh, artificial intelligence f for the operations in those ports so the risk of people actually losing jobs in in, in the future and also the risk of uh, smart ports also being being very easy for them to be to be hacked and everything so what what can be done in this okay let's also have the last question thanks a lot this one i don't know whom to address to because it's uh, it's cross cutting one the issue where the government, our government takes a real cognizance of the challenges affecting even the clogging or having so many containers uncleared, it has done its part. But the issue of these uh, CFS stations, when the government gives a direction, it cannot even control those CFS stations. At what time would we be able to deal with that. And finally, this is a burning one. Some of those shipping companies, when the government to try to attempts to help us, even uh, overcoming our challenges, some of those shipping companies have got their mandate of which they cannot also give some waivers, even considerable waivers, to help us even clear overstayed cargo such a challenge how do you go about it okay okay thanks uh, i think uh, the first question had to uh, the first uh, uh, speaker from the jqat you asked two questions one was about smart shipping i think uh, this session is about maritime safety security and regulatory reinforcement so uh, i'll direct that first question to salama fikira Banamuturi, uh, how are you? Uh, I hope you're successful as a student at JQAOT. Um, um, I'm delighted to hear you asking questions. But uh, in reality, uh, we, you've asked a, a very simple question to answer, actually. Uh, Kishmayo is um, in Jubaland, in southern Somalia. Uh, Somalia is one of the most challenged countries in Africa at the moment. There are incredibly huge issues of compliance, of governance, uh, of um, uh, of security, uh, and of course, um, what we can do as a neighbour here in Kenya, because Somalia is our neighbour, and we want to be part. Uh, uh, we want to ensure that a rich Somalia is a good Somalia. So, what is good for the what is good for the goose is good for the gander. And what I mean by that is, if we can uh, if we can create a better, more stable, uh, more economically powerful Somalia, it means that we can do better trade. Uh, and some of that, for example, could be done through uh, what is KPA, because we run uh, an, in an increasingly efficient port in Mombasa and increasingly with the new port of Lamu. That sort of technology, that experience, that uh, the personnel that we have here in Kenya, uh, we're fellow Africans, we understand them, and that's the sort of thing that we could share with them, is that sort of expertise. We'd be delighted to do that. Uh, the second part of your question was uh, actually lost on me. I'll leave somebody else to answer that. But I hope you get the first piece of it. Uh, it's very much an East Africa and Horner Africa initiative, port to port uh, and country to country. In this case, Jubaland, of course, is a federal part of Somalia. So there are also challenges in that respect as well. I hope that helps you. Karib uh, Zama. I think your, your question has not been answered, is it? Isn't it? It's more local based. I think that, that might be. The answer maybe will give it a, in a different form. In a different forum. Kindly bear with us. Okay. Uh, now, just uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank uh, the guest speakers and the panelists, and uh, I'd like now to hand over the, the moderator's role to Sobantu to conduct the, the last session. Thank you, Captain Paharo. Okay, um, can I invite as well uh, Ms. Fumni, my sister, for Lorenzo. She's uh, the Secretary General of the Ship Owners Association of Nigeria. Oh, Captain, welcome. Can we give her a round of applause, please? 
Um, the third speaker will be Mr. Joshua Oigara. Is the Group Chief Exe Executive um, of the Kenya Commercial Bank. Can I ask him to join us? Thank you. Can you give him a big round of applause as he comes? And uh, in respect of panelists, can I ask for Captain Joran Nosfir? He is the General Manager at Abo Jeb, Philippines. Captain, welcome. Can I also ask for Mr. Hank Dong Bank, is Chief Executive Officer for Jue Shipping Company. Can I, yes, welcome, sir. And um, Dr. Takuku, can I request him to come back? Uh, thank you very much uh, for the chairman, for the opportunity. Uh, Muhammad Fahmi, by the way, I'll be representing Captain Ahmad Jaffa for this particular session. Job security, job employment, job creation. Uh, I was about to share Malaysia experience. I'm from Seafarer Management Center. What I, what I, am, uh, what I am is actually a non-profit organization. It's being established actually by the Malaysian uh, Marine Department. So it's a private entity which is coordinating between the government and the private. All this while it has been, uh, people has been working in silos, private in private, and then the government entities, etc. And then you have union, seafarer association, etc. etc. There are so many voices with every, everybody has their own uh, I would say perception on certain things. So Seafarer Management Center was established in 2017 to give another view to the maritime sector in Malaysia. So at a glance, uh, Malaysian shipping industry actually we, we are blessed actually in a way that we have a very vibrant oil and gas industry. Uh, but however, we are, most of our workforce are particularly depending on outside workforce. So what we did, uh, the government did realize this uh, and the importance of having job creation for the locals. So uh, in 2017, a Malaysian shipping master plan was concluded. It's working on five pillars. Seafarers is part of it. So Malaysian uh, Seafarer Management Center was established to carry out this particular point. Okay, at that particular time, funding was an issue, an issue that nobody would like to give in and chip in the money. Uh, so the problem is usually the same. So what we did was, Malaysia did was, we introduced the EDUCOR, Certificate of Recognition. The, the purpose of this particular fund is actually to to give to get to get to give back the education fund to the local Malaysian. Happy to say that one year after the establishment, the education fund has been uh, rose 100%. So this money will be used back to channel back to the education. Okay. Uh, education. Everybody is actually looking at ISF BIMCO report. Every year, every five years, there will be a report on shortage, shortage, shortage. But actually, this particular shortage is usually at the officer's level. And what will the industry react is they will react to that particular report and then all the maritime education training will start pump out the cadets. And then you have a cyclical period of oversupply and uh, oversupply and loss of demand. So what we did is we introduced the ADCR. The ADCR uh, gave us a very particular, a very important point at which we can identify the ranks that we are shortage of so that this education fund can be fine-tuned to that particular rank instead of a whole bundle being just spread out. So. Uh, in another way, we also recognize shipping companies which are more, uh, more inclined to hire non-locals. 
So what we did is SMC did approach these particular companies and then we we get a dialogue, see what their long term plan is and see how the locals can be integrated. So that's what we did. And Seafarer Management Center is also looking at post sea carrier development. Most of us uh, Asians particularly they will sail 10 to 15 years and then because of the nature of Asian they will go back to their homeland so a carrier development plan once they are ashore is very important so this is how we keep the ball rolling the new blood will come in I uh, will not say it's old blood <laughs> those we experience will, ca uh, will come in into the onshore market so this will create a transfer of knowledge from sea to shore. So this is a sustainable thing in the long run. We try to do this in Malaysia. Uh, it's only been one year, but I will say uh, I'm quite proud of what we have done. And recently, uh, Minister of Transport of Malaysia have convened. Uh, we are re reactivating our National Shipping Council. And the whole thing will now will be convened Okay, <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, under one, one mentality, it's no more silo, it's no more the marine department think of itself, uh, the industry of itself, of, of their own opinion, and then other stakeholders have their own opinion. So what we did is to synergize all these parties and see how it benefits all the others. So that's how we do it in Malaysia. So is it a blue ocean strategy? I would say it is sustainable, it's more towards SDG, Sustainable Development Goals, of which uh, providing works to the workforce. So, so this is what we're looking at the next five years. We are looking at how to cater our workforce into the IR4 instead of relying on the ISF Binko. We are trying to move a step ahead in that we know that in future there will be autonomous vessel etc 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 but I would say the time will not mature until until the car itself is self-sufficient to drive by itself then maritime is about 20 years lag between autonomous car so we are looking at this particular area and we are synergizing all the METs in Malaysia stakeholders to take a look into this instead of everybody scrambling for the normal pie of the workforce so this is what we are doing now okay then uh, I'll be more than happy to answer any question if you have later on at the end of the session I'll pass it over to chairman Thank you. Big round of applause and I'm sorry to be doing this to you we really are pushed for time can I please ask for my sister um, Ms. Fumni, to, to come through, you've got five minutes. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, thank you. African Ship Owners Association is a group of Africans who own ships, whether flying an African flag or not. What do we aim to do? Increase our membership. Now, don't worry about the slides, because I have five minutes. That's a presentation for 10 minutes. What do we intend to do? Increase our members and increase our participation in global maritime operations, increase our tonnage, increase our participation. I would not insult the intelligence of this uh, gathering by going into definitions of cabotage. I need to emphasize here and now that the time for cabotage within Africa is here right and now. I am not talking about um, fancy ideas. And I will not go into the WTO and what is the justification and whatever not. May I remind you that right now the African Union is driving with Afroexim Bank, the African trade, uh, free continental trade and whatever. What I see happening in the next couple of years, if it works, and we have nations who have signed up on it, that we will have more of African trade. Where, who carries them? Is it Maskline? Is it Panalpina? Is the CNC CGM. We are advocating that the African shipping, African ship owners are encouraged. Why? Simple reasons. The gentleman, just before I went upstairs, 
has established for us what Philippines earns in terms of um, income from their seafarers. Look at the size of a ship, you know the numbers who are employed, look at the rippling effects, the marine insurance, the KCB gets to finance it, the lawyers get to put the papers together, so many chains of uh, value chains are added right there. But what concerns us right now is the teeming population of Africans who do not have employment. We have youth who could be engaged in African, in the maritime industry. I am not looking at Philippines. I am saying for us in Africa, how do we attack this restive youth? I come from a country where we have had a consultant work and we found that some of the issues of piracy and things is a direct revolution against foreigners who these young boys and girls think they're exploiting the maritime industry. What do we stand to gain? Cabotage. We have an established cabotage regime in Africa. The African Maritime Transport Charter talks about it. If we need to find laws within Africa, the African um, Free Continental Trade Agreement talks about the trade within Africa to be carried by the ships. Therefore, I have no apologies in saying this is the time for it now. I am not here. In the five minutes that we have, we have the legal framework. We have definition of who participates. We have so many political issues to still sort out. But what I think we are doing right now is to initiate some talk. Let's look at it you are generating cargo, you are proposing to generate cargo, intra-African cargo, encourage us to trade within ourselves. I am asking you to look at the next step, which is who is carrying that cargo. I will go straight, immediate results for the cabotage would have. There would be a demand for ships. We cannot purchase new build, ask them to go build new ships. We're still going to be looking at partnerships with those who have already and who are already in the trade in Africa, but there will be a demand for ships. Ships bring along with it. And those of us who are here who have worked with, you know what business the ship brings along with it. I am more, as an association, we're concerned with short sea trade right now. We're not talking about the container lines and whatever, just not now. The short sea trade that we would go and train some of our cadets and have training beds. Nobody outside there, nobody, and I stand to be corrected, would give an African cadet priority over his own cadets. Training beds, income revenue, seafarers, employment on board, on shore, around the ports and everywhere. The insurance get to um, benefit, the banks get to benefit, the maritime administrations get to benefit, and so many of us get to benefit. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I am saying to you, if Ethiopia shipping, Ethiopia enforced cabotage and the growth in ship ownership, it should say to us that this is a time for it, for us to enforce a continental cabotage made up of national cabotage. On behalf of the African Ship Owners Association, I wish to extend a sincere appreciation to the President of Kenya on the revival of the Kenya National Shipping Line. It is a start. It could be perfected. We're looking at partnerships between Kenya Shipping Line and other African shipping lines. But Madam, through you, we want to say thank you to the President. He's shown other African countries what should be done. Thank you. She's a very passionate speaker, so I can understand the frustration she has, but it is the time constraints that I have. Can I now call upon uh, Mr. Peter Katanga? He's uh, standing in for Mr. Joshua um, Oigara. Good evening. Yes, my name is Peter Katanga, not Joshua Oigara. Joshua is not able to join us this evening. It is a great honor to be amongst the generation whose potential will make or break the future. It is through platforms such as this that we will be able to develop change mechanisms that will shift our mindsets towards optimizing resource consumption. In this case, more specifically, 
water as the main resource. And very quickly, in our vision to empower the blue economy sector, and our riding call for sustainable practices, KCB Bank Kenya will in the coming months partner with the government of Kenya to provide innovative financing models and financing sources for investments in the blue economy. We believe that innovation is key to survival in an ending dynamic environment in order to ensure proper sustainable development towards this upcoming sector. It is important for the private sector and especially financial institutions to merge in harmony and create financial block focused on innovation and capacity building. What do I say about this particular topic? One, as I was going through my notes, I realized that KCB is not only the largest bank in East Africa. The bank began in, 19, in 1896 in Mombasa as a result of the blue economy. I don't know whether Nancy then it existed. So we began at the port in Mombasa. So, and looking at it, what have we been able to do? One, in 